just doing my hair, excuse me, because I've just come from the opera. Yes, in these old togs, they allowed me in. Togs which I normally use for going through a hedge backwards on a country walk, which is probably more real than the joke implies. The opera, well, it's in an opera house built in Royal Tunbridge Wells. Uh, it only lasted a few years, built in the spa town's heyday, but over the years it served as a bingo hall, but today it's owned by the Weatherspoons pub chain. They've had it a couple of years and they've done the place up, making it look like a theatre, which it is still occasionally used for. I noticed whilst I was there that there was a production of the Mikado coming up. Anyway, before going on the walks, I'd like to take you around this former opera house. It really has been very well preserved. So come with me before, before we go on the walks around Royal Tunbridge Wells. The Opera House was built in 1902, but converted into a cinema in 1931. It became a bingo hall in the 1970s until it was purchased and restored by J.D. Weatherspoon in the 1990s. Now serving as a pub, much of the original theatre has been retained and still used for occasional opera performances. I was granted access to the store's circle and relied on the superb image stabilization in the EM1 Mark II and 12 to 100 Pro lens for hand holding. I kept the ISO at 200, white balance on auto, used program mode and saved the raw for adjustments in Adobe Lightroom. I think it has worked, but then I would expect that from Olympus. Prior to the 17th century, this corner of the High Weald on the Kent-Sussex border consisted mainly of woodland and rough pasture. There were villages, but Tunbridge Wells was not established until the accidental discovery of spa water in 1606, and the word soon spread about its beneficial properties. From the court of Charles II to Queen Victoria, the rich and famous came. During the 18th and 19th centuries, the Earl of Abergavenny developed the town to become one of the most fashionable spa resorts, attracting many visitors that included Daniel Defoe and Samuel Pepys. Much of the town's acquired opulence can be seen in its architecture, in its gardens and open spaces. Because of slippery ground, the Duke of Gloucester suffered a fall and gave £100 for the paving of the walks with small square clay tiles known as pentiles. It has since been repaved with flagstones. Now, Edward VII, one of its many royal visitors, authorised its royal prefix in 1909. The surrounding countryside is blessed with scenery of the highest order. One of its most distinctive and fascinating features are the outcrops of sandstone rock that took shape millions of years ago, which can be viewed on the common bordering the town. We shall encounter more examples of this unique landscape feature on our walks. However, before leaving town, Take a peek inside the 17th century church of King Charles the Martyr and admire its decorative plaster ceiling. I managed to handhold at a 40th of a second at 200 ISO with the Olympus E400 and that camera was before micro four thirds.
The Tunbridge Wells Circular Walk goes back to 1989. It was devised by Mike Smith, who sadly died shortly after its creation. It is 27 and a half miles in length, but can be divided into sections, which is how I approached my photographic task. Throughout, I used the same camera setup as in the Opera House, but now with the white balance set optimistically on sunny, using program mode and aperture priority. I spot metered with the aid of the electronic finder in the EM1 Mark II and of course saved to RAW, where I added the creative and artistic touch. My guide was a publication produced by the Kent High Wheeled Project, unfortunately no longer available, but still reliable. I haven't done the entire route. Instead, concentrating on areas easily accessible by public transport from the west, plus one route from the town centre to Pembury. However, whatever section I chose, weather was always the creative element, and I spaced my visits throughout the year. As you may have gathered, I was often sidetracked by the photo opportunities offered by the Spa Town Centre. I was greatly attracted by the sandstone rocks west of town, best seen at Eridge Rocks, Harrison's Rocks, High Rocks and Toad Rock. I found walk number five in the booklet describing the route between Eridge and Groombridge, which I did in reverse, particularly rewarding for reaching not only Eridge Rocks, but Harrison's Rocks too, where you will find rock climbers practicing their skills. The county boundary slices Groombridge in two, the Kent half being more photogenic with its picturesque buildings, church, green and Groombridge place. The Spa Railway starts in the other half, in East Sussex, and can be used for accessing high rocks, but I walked the way as it followed the track for part of the journey, and I took a shot of the train as it passed. High Rocks has been a favourite destination since Victorian times, and its adjacent hotel is still popular for that special occasion, as was Toad Rock on Rusthall Common when visitors were brought up from the station in Sharabangs to see the rocky outcrops. From here a link path can be followed to Speldhurst. Its parish church dates back to the 13th century and has Burn Jones stained glass. These softer landscapes of Kent and East Sussex are the perfect contrast to northern landscapes. Royal Tunbridge Wells can be busy, but don't let that put you off as refuge can quickly be sought by escaping to its adjacent common or further afield to its circular trail. You will hardly meet a soul. 
so enjoy its surroundings in peace and quiet. But choose a weekday, not a weekend or a bank holiday.